Hi, welcome to Well Travel Life with Jonathan and Jennifer. And uh, we're actually in Seattle today, about to, uh, we're heading out to Alaska later today, but we will be uploading today a video about our trip to Melvick. Oh, Deborah and Angus, finally it's Melvick. We have been dying to do this video for so long. We had such a great time. Yeah, uh, really a shout out to Deborah. And Angus, uh, we loved your place. We loved staying there. We loved your life. We love your life. We love your little, and I, I hesitate to even call it a town. Melvick is hardly <laughs> even a village. Uh, we did stop at the Hallidale for lunch and a beer, yep. which was good. I'm not going to say that hit our best of Melvick list, but there is the big house which is an amazing estate right off the beach in Melbourne. yeah speaking of the beach we took time to go down to the beach oh, spectacular All right. some of the drone shots you'll be seeing uh, on this video were shot at that beach uh, it's a beautiful hike uh, you're you're hiking along the beach uh, with uh, a traditional beach but also rock paths uh, sheep in the area. Uh, the Hallidale River is sort of meandering through and empties into the ocean and you can follow that along and that's where you'll see the Big House Lodge. Yeah, by far I would say the highlight of that stay and that trip. And we apologize for the background noise here. We were trying to find some place to shoot this, but uh, uh, the highlight of that stay was clearly Deborah and Angus. And, oh. And, and for uh, I think both of us, uh, Deborah and, and Angus, you're the reason why we travel the people yes. that we meet. Yes. <laughs> We're just normal people. Is that We're just you? normal people, <laughs> everyday people making a living. That's it. I love it. They had an interesting backstory. What was interesting is they had actually left Melvick, and they are they are, well. Angus, born and raised in Melvick and has a long family history. In fact, the last name is Mackay, and this is Mackay land. This is the land of the Mackays. So Angus is old school Scotland and old school Melvick, Scotland. In fact, the home that we stayed in, this Airbnb that we're gonna tour for you, is actually yeah. his old family home. I think Angus may have even been born in the house. Yeah, they've got a lot of work on it. A right? lot of work it on it. It was fabulous. But, uh, and they were actually living in a building right beside yeah, it that, right. Is, that built out as a living space. And they were renting out this home, which is on the NC 500, the North Coast 500. Literally, you have to, if you're on the NC 500, you have to pass by their house. You're going to pass so. by there. But uh, they had, uh, Angus and Deborah had left that area, had worked in Eastern Europe, uh, and had a good life there, but had come back home. I think COVID was probably part of that, but uh, just such special people. We were driving an electric vehicle and uh, they went to great lengths to help us charge that because at that point in our trip, we were having lots of trouble finding either chargers that were operating or being able to use those. And so they tried very hard to charge us overnight uh, from their local power. Unfortunately, it didn't work, but not through a lack of uh, trying, and we really... And they uh, were calling friends and like, hey, do you know where other chargers are? And we had gone down to Betty Hill and tried to find a charger. We'd gone into sort of the village of Melvick and tried to find a charger. We did not find a charger. So we were sort yeah. of a little bit worried as we left Melvick, we knew we had to find charging. And in our next video, we'll share with you how we finally got charged, but it was not an easy process. This is where we started running into trouble charging. Yeah. Just as kind of an aside, we are staying in a small boutique hotel in downtown uh, Seattle that I think just by chance has what is it's a very Scottish thing. I mean, if I look around and where we had dinner last night, uh, in the, the heart and the... It, it could be in Scotland. There are lots of plaids, the furniture, there are lots of uh, visual images of Scotland from stags to just the architecture and the materials. And it had a very Scottish feel. So very. Uh, Angus and uh, 
Deborah, we're definitely thinking about you today. We're so in spirit with you today. Yeah. Enjoy this video. Our last video was from Thurzo. We were up at that very northwest corner of Scotland, and we're now coming back down the western side of the country. This is where the North Coast 500 really starts to feel remote. You're in wild Scotland. Along the route, we made a few stops just at roadside pullouts that looked to have great views. We found cliffs and huge meadows of sage and heather. We found bogs and just took our time enjoying these incredible landscapes. And now I'm falling slowly into Not that the land is used for open grazing, so we found sheep were frequent companions both on the road and in the fields at the side of the road. On gray rainy days, it could be really easy to just think we want to stay inside and get cozy and enjoy feeling of winter, even though it's summer. But we would urge you to not allow yourself to succumb to that. Get out into these landscapes, even when the weather isn't fabulous. We had gray skies and rain for much of this day, but it was one of our favorite outdoor days. The lighting is spectacular. There's something to see everywhere you look. And being outside in these, in these kind of moody atmospheres is really part of the draw of Scotland. In the next video, we're gonna be in an area where it's sunny and the water is turquoise blue and the beaches look like white sand. And it's beautiful, but this has its own vibe to it and it's worth seeing we would just say get out don't allow yourself to use the weather as an excuse to not see the beauty it is only about a 45 minute drive from thurso to melvick so on this day we made a number of stops this particular area is outside of ray which has these beautiful cliffs and the bogs the more time we spend near the shore, the more we appreciate that ruggedness of the Scottish coastline. Seasons change outside the window. Winter's turning into spring. Now the sky is clear and I just want to hear have learned that if you are seeing wind farms or fields of windmills, there's a good chance it's a windy area. That is definitely true of this northwestern part of the country. That doesn't take away from its beauty. It just adds to that rugged feel that the land has. In our last video from Thurzo, we talked a little bit about the highland clearances and that they were using the land for open grazing for sheep. That is still very true. We saw sheep everywhere alongside the roads and in the roads, which is a reminder about driving. The North Coast 500 is not a freeway. Some places it feels like a single track road. This is a two-way road, but it's narrow on both sides and there's not a lot of shoulder and you need to be careful of who's around you. If you're coming 
the Melvick from the north, the Thurzo direction, you'll get to the Hollidale Cafe just before you get to the village of Melvick. We stopped in, had a beer, had some lunch, and then realized that the Smithy Cottage where we were staying at Deborah and Angus's was literally practically across the street and less than a block down the road. The Hollidale is the river that we will show you that runs into the ocean and sort of defines the landscape around here. The Mackays have a tremendous amount of history. This is the big house lodge that is right along the Hollidale River and this footage from the beach, which is just down the road from the Smithy Cottage. Searching for the reasons in need of the rhymes, always feeling like I'm the one out of time. Moving round in circles, feeling like I've lost my way. beach in Melvick. Beautiful wide open beach but what you really want to come here for are the rocks. Go look at those rocks. It's like a natural tumbler out here. You, as the waves come in you can hear the rocks tumble in and as they go out you can absolutely hear them crackle crackle tumble back out. When I saw you walking Watching you was such a thrill All that I could do was laugh I couldn't hold it back I couldn't hold it I couldn't hold it back 
Deborah actually gave us a ride to the beach and then we walked home. Jonathan took the road well traveled and just walked along the roadside. Tammy and I took the road less traveled and found our way home over fences. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We're climbing fences. Through pastures, next to sheep, beside cows, and near a horse. But it was a great walk and we actually wouldn't have missed the adventure for anything. This is the old Highland resettlement cropping area. And Deborah and Angus have a couple of different crops. Angus will give us a little bit of background here. Okay, a croft was a small strip of land that was given from the owners of the ground at the time. And they were told to just dig that cultivated. And that's where you see a lot of dikes. Not so much now, but the dikes are the stones out of the ground that they've stacked to one side. And that's out. their border. And then they decided they could or their boundary. They and then over the years, so one croft went into another croft, people died and things like that. And they just extended them, so now that's just one cross the street. So down. this one goes all the way down to the river? All, all, all the way down to the river. Further down? Just another one further up the road, 50 yards in. Okay. Yards up the road, and we'll see them again. But this was normally they're about two acre, and there have been just like moorland hill ground there, the same as you see. Almost almost there. Loads of stones. And they just dug the hand, hand dug the stones out, and put dikes in. Lords. Deborah and Angus raised sheep and Highland cattle, who we got to spend a little time visiting. Well, Highland coos are generally pretty docile. You do want to be careful about not interrupting mothers with their children, as they can be protective. The animals seem unfazed by the Scottish summer rains. They are specially bred to withstand the extreme cold temperatures that you find here in the highlands. As we mentioned, the old smithy is Deborah and Angus's family home. It is one bathroom, four bedrooms, two living rooms, a huge kitchen, and a laundry room, right on the NC 500. Take a tour with us. Come on, let me show you. As you enter through the back door, there is a full laundry area with a washer dryer system and a place to hang wet clothes because our experience is there's a good chance it's going to be wet. And from the laundry room, if you take a right and go down the hall, there is only one bathroom, but it is quite large, includes a toilet, a sink basin, and a full bathtub with a shower attachment. This is the only bathroom and it's on the first floor, so those second floor guests will need to come down to this bathroom, which could be tricky in the middle of the night. Wait till you see the stairs. The main bedroom downstairs is lovely and bright, has a big window to the side yard and a double-sized bed, as well as a chair and a little footstool in here as well. And if from the laundry room entrance you turn left, you would end up in the kitchen. The kitchen is like a large country kitchen with microwave, stove, oven, and this is like a really fabulous stove and oven. Gas powered, you don't find that very often. All of your glassware, bakeware, cookware is included as well as a small refrigerator with a welcome package of cereals and some pancakes. We had some shortbread. Which is always a hit. The house is very straightforward with an upstairs and a downstairs, but it's got an interesting configuration on the inside. There are a couple of these little anterooms and they serve as a seating area, but this is also where you'll find the Bluetooth speaker and your internet connection information. And you'll use this as sort of a pass-through to get to one of two living room areas. This is a beautiful living room with this incredible huge hearth, a TV, and a wood-burning stove in there. You'll continue through this anteroom to another little anteroom, and this is actually the front door. We never used the front door. We just tend to go out the back door all the time. And this will take you to the second living room, which also has a wood-burning fireplace and leather sofas. Our hosts left out a really great collection of books, 
about the area as well as other trips they had taken and that they had loved. In Britain, they'll refer to this room as a snug. I love that word. All of the windows in this house have these great big deep bays, which make it really pretty and great for decoration. Now, as you go up these stairs, recognize there's not a railing, so you really do need to be careful. They're a little bit windy, a little bit steep, a little bit narrow. It's completely safe and they're carpeted, which is really comfortable, but you do need to watch yourselves. There is a baby gate at the top. We didn't have a need for that, obviously, but it is safe for small children. There is a small little room in here that has a futon sofa and a skylight. And right next door is the room that we stayed in. This is the main bedroom upstairs with a small window here. These incredible, beautiful beams, a skylight above the bed and a full-sized bed. This is the main bedroom upstairs with a small wardrobe and a sitting bench. There is also a walkway over to the secondary bedroom on the side of the house with a two twin beds, which I suppose you could put together as a king, a large wardrobe, and again, a skylight as well as a window. And in this walkway, there is a full-size mirror as well as another big skylight. So the house is super light and bright, has all of the old original details from the original house, but all of the mod cons and things you need to make it comfortable, plugs in every room, as well as the laundry and really updated kitchen. When I do see a Scottish flag, yeah. I'm assuming that they are maybe pro-succession. Some people, it's to do with the, um, they wanted to come away from Westminster, so they wanted to be independent. Right. But the trouble is, independence would be an absolutely great thing. Yeah. yeah? yeah. But unfortunately at the minute, I mean I'm English, but the, there's a lot of people up here or in Scotland that don't believe in the independence, you see. Yeah, no, but when I see a flag, is, is it more no, likely? not really, it's just like no. a patriotic thing, okay. really, in, in some instances. Okay, I don't see any British flags. Well, you won't, will you, in Scotland? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like you go to Wales, you won't see a Union Jack in Wales, yeah. now you'll see a St David's Cross. And so, George, no, St David's in England, St David's in England, St Andrews in Scotland yeah. and St George in England. And the British well, flag is all of them, right? Yeah. 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 From this Highland Croft in far northwest Scotland, we hope you'll continue this journey with us and we'll bring you our next video from Durness. So, enjoy this video. Thank you for watching. And thank you for your friendship. And we're going to stay in touch and we're going to see you again. We are either coming back to Melvick, we're going to travel together, but somehow, because as Deborah says, you're my kind of people and we could do, get into some trouble together. And that could be fun. Thanks. Yeah. It worked for a while, where? <laughs>